Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Really powerful fish. Yes! Awesome! Look at that for a carp. I'm Mark Pitchers, ways aware of tea drinking, caffeine intolerance, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes. This is the challenge. What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to the challenge. Right now it is the middle of April, but you would never think it in a million years because it is absolutely Baltic. This morning it is now minus two. Temperatures last night got down to minus six and pretty much everywhere in the country at the moment is either covered in a hard frost or snow. So no matter what this challenge is, it's gonna be tough. Harry has driven up today to give me my challenge. So Harry, give me my challenge. Here you go. Thank you. Okay, so in three nights, you must catch three car on three different tactics. And one must be a three T. 30. 30. Yeah, I guess so. So three nights, three car, three tactics, and a three zero. Okay, yeah. So I think that would have been a bit tricky at any time of year, but given the conditions we've got right now, it's going to be even more tricky, but I think there's quite a few venues where that is doable. So yeah, I'm just going to have to get my thinking cap on, come up with a venue, pretty sharpish, because we need to get on the road and get started. Just, just on that choosing a, a venue, um, I didn't write down in the, I, I, must, have, I must have forgotten. It's only write what's down. written down here that counts, no, by no, the way, no, before I'm... you put anything in. It's literally, that's a challenge. Uh, anything that isn't wrote down doesn't count. Well, I make the rules. So, yeah, basically, I've got a little way of you, you honing down on the venue. That, to make uh, it easier for me? Um, it makes it easier for you to, to choose the general area. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got something that sort of set up for you and uh and i'll i'll show it to you in a sec and you okay. can choose your venue it's not pulling notes out of your bum hole again is it? <laughs> i've done that before <laughs> they were just blank bits of paper didn't even have, didn't even have anything wrote on them right are you ready for this uh-huh are you ready uh-huh oh okay it is a map of the UK on a dart. Okay, I think I know where this is going. So, you've got to chuck the dart at the map and wherever the dart lands, okay, that's where you're going. Can I have some practice first? I've not thrown a dart since the last dart challenge we did. Was it about episode nine? nine? Yeah, I think it was nine. That was a great shot. I was amazing at darts. I learned. You were, you were blindfolded then. I won't. You don't have to be blindfolded now. So you have got a slight advantage okay. there. Bear in mind, I was pretty good at darts when I wasn't blindfolded. I learned. So I think this is in the bag for in me. The, in the bag. Yeah, yeah. Already. Yeah. I reckon I can do this. Okay. I can hit a bullseye at 500 yards. <laughs> Chucking it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably right, 50 let's, yards. Let's get it set up, and uh, and we'll see about that. Okay, practice. The sun is in my eyes. Pick a county and I'll hit it. North Yorkshire. Oh, yeah, go on then, North Yorkshire. <laughs> Where was that? North Lincolnshire. See, it was the north. <laughs> yeah. I got confused. But How many right. practices are you having? Ten. Ten practices? No, 
I'll give you three practices. No. I'm, the sun's in my eyes. I can't even see. Pick another one. Go, okay. No, Norfolk. That's a big one. Oh, that's near the sea. Okay, Norfolk. <laughs> You've got no chance at this. This time he's going to aim it straight. Pick another one. Norfolk again. Are you ready? Oh, <laughs> okay, Cumbria. <laughs> right in the middle of Cumbria. See, I've got it now. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> right, I've got it. So is that it then? Is this is this this is that me practice? That's I'll, your practice. I think it was not too bad. Okay, so looking at the map, I want to be in a county where there's obviously a number of 30s. So Cambridgeshire, I'd be happy there. Bedfordshire, Northamptonshire, Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire, <sighs> Shropshire. So any of these, literally any any of them, and we're in business, I think. Right, are you ready? Right, Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire. I think it, it'll happen. Oxfordshire. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Where's that? Where's that? I don't that even know. That looks very, I very west. Even, I don't even know. <laughs> very west. Oh dear, that's in Wales. <laughs> that's a rethrow. I think that's Gwynedd. That's the actual one. That's it. I don't even know anywhere. <laughs> I don't even know. This, I know. Okay, I don't like. Let's not do it for the county. Because I don't like. I literally don't even know anything about Gwynedd. I don't. Wales. You've got to complete this challenge in Wales. <sighs> I feel deflated already. I really do. It's cold here, it'll be even colder in Wales, won't it? Right, it is what it is. I'm going to have to make a few phone calls and uh, try and get a venue in mind. Cool. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. I was shit at that, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> With my knowledge of carp fishing in Wales being about as extensive as Harry's knowledge of the female anatomy, I needed to call in some assistance. So is this Rich? Yeah. Right, thanks. Hello mate, how are you? Yeah, that's bad. Good, good. Um, just going to give you a warning before you start swearing in Welsh. Um, we are just filming a challenge at the moment. Okay. But I need your help massively. Now, I didn't choose Wales. Wales chose me. I think we can say for this one. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically I have to do the challenge in Wales. Do you right. know of anywhere? Because I've been Googling and not many places come up. I think there's like four options came up on Google. Okay, well there's, there's, there's a new lake in sort of towards, I don't know, mid, mid, Midwest Wales. Yeah. Which is the one I'm not sure it's called. You've got uh, the other you've really named. You've got Lambie Lake in Cardiff. Yeah. You've got, you've got the wharf in Cardiff. Yeah. You've got the birch fishery in Cardiff. You've yeah. got White Springs in Swansea. Uh, there's you. You get to keep under. Okay. Um, get him to send you some contact. Then. Yeah. Can you possibly just just text or email me with a few phone numbers? Whenever you, I can tell you're driving at the moment, so whenever you get I am driving, yeah. chance, yeah, mate. I, I, I can send you those through. Yeah, What's just the problem? yeah. If you had to, if if you had to go and catch a thirty now in Wales, and you could go anywhere, where would you go? Try the new one. The new one. Try the new one in Midwest, Midwest Wales. Right. Okay. Can you put that at the top of the list? Have you have you got a contact for them that place? Yeah, I've got contact numbers. Awesome, that sounds good. Whenever you can, I'll mate. I'll pull over, I'll pull over, I'll send you some details through. Awesome, thank you so much. That is a massive, massive help. Thank you for that, Rich. Good luck, bud. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Bye. Bye. So, Rich has just 
texted me over the contact details for um, four venues where he thinks I'll have a good chance of a 30 pounder in Wales. And he's done them in order. So I'm gonna start with the first one. Uh, he doesn't know the name of it, but he said it's the, the, the new venue. It must be the same venue I'm looking at here. So I'm now gonna send a message, a very polite, well-worded, slightly ass kissy message <laughs> to see if there's any chance of me fishing there at such short notice. I mean, hi, can I come and fish a lake now? please. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, well, here goes. Let's send a message and see what happens. So, I just had the message I've been waiting for, and we've got the green light. Yes! So, that's it. We can head off down there today. I, um, I feel like there's a massive, massive weight being released off my, off my shoulders at the moment. I mean, this challenge is by no means in the bag but at least now I know I'm going to a good venue with a good stock of big fish and yeah you know what I can't wait for the five and a half hour drive to get to Wales <laughs> <laughs> no it's going to be good it's going to be good and I am looking forward to it Well, here we are, finally, after my sat-nav sent me completely the wrong way. It's taken me nearly six hours to get here, but it really was a sight for sore eyes when I pulled up in the car park because we have a beautiful little pool. It's around two acres in size, a really nice, intimate small water, which is a bit of me. I do like these small waters, and I can't wait to get started. Um, because it's taken me so long to get here, we now only have around 45 minutes before nightfall. Um, so yeah, I do need to get a move on. I'm going to carry on with my lap, go and get the kit out of the van and make a start. Watch you don't fall down there. Pretty steep, isn't it? It's all right, I've watched Bear grills. I know how to do this. And you go down sideways like a crab, apparently. That's what Bear would do. <laughs> then when he gets to the bottom, he'll take all his clothes off and drink his own piss just for a laugh. Because <laughs> he's Bear Grills. That's what Bear Grills does. Rocky, all right. But she's in. Not just the tip, everything. I've got a lot in there. Everyone told me you'll only get the tip in. You'll need a mallet to bang it in. No, I've got everything in. Well, because I didn't know I was coming to this venue up until a few hours ago, well, eight hours ago, something like that, I am not prepared at all and I didn't expect to be coming to a venue as snaggy as this and in the rules it does state that you need to use a, uh, a snag lead or at least a rod length and behind that um, a length of uh, lead free leader to protect, to reinforce everything against all the, the sharp rocks that are in here and it was lucky I had all those things um, for my continental fishing. I've got a, a bag in the back of the van of all the, the spares I carry for when I go abroad. And luckily, I had everything I needed 
to be able to rig up for fishing on here. And setting everything up in this fashion is time consuming. There's, there's no way I'm getting the rods in before it gets dark, absolutely no way. Um, I don't have any rigs tied for here. I've got nothing, absolutely nothing. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be dark when I get these rods in the water. <laughs> So I need to catch carp on three different tactics. And my opening tactic really is to just get the rods in the water, basically. <laughs> That's the opening tactic. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna be using a washed out pink Carp Freaks pop-up and a little mesh bag of boily chrome and pellets. That's it. I don't wanna mess around too much. I don't wanna in introduce bait at this stage. This is kind of me feeling my way into the session, getting the rods in the water and by the morning, I think I'll have a better understanding of, of how the fish are feeding, where the fish are feeding, hopefully, and then I can reassess the tact and, and maybe change tactics then if I think I need to. You're looking so smug about, we'll cut you up to something. I've got to say that is the coldest I have fished in April before. It was absolutely Baltic. Tell you what, there's an alarming lack of daffodils. That's disappointing. I thought would, there'd have been a lot more daffodils in Wales. Not seen one. I haven't seen a dragon, not one dragon. Two of the three things Wales is famous for, I haven't seen. I haven't seen a daffodil or a big red dragon. I haven't seen Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Little had occurred through the night and into that morning. However, I was undeterred and now was my first real opportunity just to sit back and observe. Two subtle shows over on the far bank give the game away. And soon enough, I was hot stepping to the other side to get on them. So I've just had a, a quick move around the opposite side of the lake. I've just brought the rods, alarms, and unhooking mat, which is also my chair, and the landing net, and a few little essential bits. And what few carp I have seen today have all been on this, along this bank. I've got one rod to the left of the swim on the entrance to a channel that goes around the back of the island. And when I've cast that out and felt the lead down, it was only shallow, I felt four or five feet deep. And it's a nice shallow depth of water. At the moment, I'm quite content fishing with this one rod, which I'm, I'm really happy with. And I would have thought we'd have seen more carp by now. I was hoping I had, I'd have a bit more to go on. I'd thought we'd have seen maybe more carp as, a, as the, the days warmed up. But since this morning, we've not seen anything. But either way, I've got one rod in the water on a good spot. And hopefully that can pay off. Well, the day is wearing on and I have decided to stay put in this swim for the night ahead. And since I've been here, I have received a couple of liners and I've also seen a couple of fish show. It might have been the same one show twice, but where that fish has showed is where I'm going to deploy this rod. And my plan for the night is to fish a different tactic on each rod 
Whereas last night I kind of fished the same tactic on all three. Tonight I'm going to fish a different one on each rod. That way, if I do catch tonight, I'm not having to then reel in after perfectly setting the traps. I'm not having to reel in and then make any changes and cause any unnecessary disturbance. So this rod is going out to where I saw that fish show. Got a hinge stiff rig and that is baited with a yellow CC Moore Northern Special pop-up. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to fish this with a lightly uh, baited approach with boilie, just boilie. I'm just going to scatter 15, maybe 20 boilies in the general vicinity, not spread over half the lake, but just a general vicinity to hopefully entice something into the area and drop down and have a bit of a feed. So that's what I'm going to do right now. The remaining two rods were both fished with low-lying pop-ups. The left was presented over five spawns of XXX boily crumb, and for the right-hand rod, I hooked on a PVA mesh bag. This was cast down towards a small bay where I had seen fish show earlier that morning. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. I saw that lake driving here. I'm not joking, by the way. That's a famous Welsh tea lake. So what's going on now is we're having fish and chips brought to us, which is very nice. And we are going to enjoy with that a cup of, say that Harry for me. <laughs> Glen, Glen Gittai, Glen Gittai. Glenn yeah. Glenn Yeah. Yeah. And this? Here. Fethin i nigamru ers canelli Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we're going to enjoy a cup of that with our fish and chips. Pretty exciting, yeah? Mm. Well, all three traps are now set, and this is probably the most confident I've felt since I've been at the fishery. Since I have got the rods in place, I've seen fish show very close to two of them. I've received liners on each of the rods. I feel like the tactics I'm using on each rod is the right approach for where it's, where it's fishing and how it's being fished. I feel like I'm in the right location, and I think now, there's not much more I can do. It really is in the lap of the carp gods. Hopefully they will look at me with pity, I think, <laughs> <laughs> and reward me with a big fat carp. literally just done the piece to camera saying how confident I was of getting some some sort of action that was literally 10 seconds ago by the way and here we are playing the fish so hard I, I don't want to I don't want to cl clamp down while I know the fish is in open water I'm told the snags near the island at the moment is nowhere near the island what it's like close in I don't know because Next to me, we've got this kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, this collection of boulders. And if that continues into the lake, it could be, uh, it could be interesting. I'm gonna move down this bank away from these rocks. I'm not liking them much at all. Oh, ping off the fin. That is a nice sized fish. 
Ooh, I was not expecting that. He's got to be ready. He's got to be ready. Come on. Oh, that's a nice fish. My heart's pounding. Takes are going to be so few and far between on this session. They really are. Conditions are not great. There's not going to be many opportunities. 40 carp in here. Come on now. This time. There we are. This time. This time. Get in that net. Get. Never. Come back round. Come back round. Come back round. Get in that net. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's a big fat, big fat calf. <laughs> That hook just come out in the net? No, the hook base just come off. That is a fat carp. I don't want to say how big it is. At this stage, it doesn't really matter how big it is. I am just so, so relieved. Oh. That'll do. <laughs> Cheers. It is. 26.14 so that's actually my Welsh PB so I'll take that well what a way to get this challenge up and running we've got a really solid and quite lively mirror of 26 pound 14 ounces it might not be a 30 but it really doesn't matter that's one of the three carp that I desperately needed I was saying just a few moments before the rod rattled off how confident I was, but I really didn't expect anything quite so quickly. <laughs> Absolutely buzzing. Well, that's one tactic down the mesh PVA bag, so I can't use that again. But I think there's still going to be a few more chances with the other tactics I've got left. And that is an amazing start to the evening and a great way to kick off this challenge. Thank you very much. Going backwards. <laughs> I've made up with that. Well, it's 3 a.m. And as you can tell, I'm playing another fish. And it's the same rod that I just cast back out on the single hook bait after landing that fish earlier. And this fish. Doesn't feel nice. It's just gone around a rock or something. It's a horrible, horrible sensation. This fish is really pulling. Really pulling. The other one was like a dog on a lead. This isn't. I need to be stood where you're stood. I can't see. I felt the line pinging and grating. Oh my oh. God, you you need a rock at you. <laughs> what the hell? He's, he's probably as dis disorientated by that light as I am. I have no idea. That's super bright. Have you put different batteries in it or something? It's so foggy. My head torch is doing absolutely nothing. I can see about three foot in front of me. That's it. Oh, there he is. The little fella. Right, here he comes. 
Here he comes. Here he comes. Get in. Yes, he's in. <laughs> He's not that little. <laughs> What's I on about? <laughs> oh, he's really not that little at all. <laughs> what is crazy is Steve, the fishery owner, was talking about two fish that he hasn't seen on the bank for ages. And I think this one could be one of them. He described it as like a, a linear with a cross. That's a linear with a cross. Yeah, I'm just sort of looking at it thinking, is that a linear with a cross? I don't know. Okay. I think that's a little bit bigger. I don't think it's a 30. I think it's a little bit bigger than the other one. Let's have a look. What? What? 29.14. <laughs> what do you make of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it felt a bit bigger, but not quite a 30. So, <laughs> there you go. It is what it is. But you can't be disappointed with a fish like that. I mean, look at it. That looks amazing. That is an epic, epic looking carp. <laughs> but what I'm going to do now, I'm quickly going to put him back in the retainer. Because Steve, the fishery owner, has said if we catch anything at night, he would like them retained so that he can have a look at them himself. And I know what he's like. I like to see my babies <laughs> from my lake course. I like to see them in the flesh, see how, see how they're looking. This one's looking very fine. <laughs> Lovely, isn't she? Yeah. Really solid. This is the fish that we caught in the misty darkness and we waited for it to get light to see it in all its glory. And look at it, absolutely magnificent. Yes, I needed to catch a 30 pounder and I've come very, very close with this at 29 pound 14 ounces, but size doesn't matter. It really is such an incredible looking carp. I'm not gonna be disappointed catching something like this. Unbelievable. So I thought we'd have one more look at him from the other side before we slip him back. As you can see, it's equally, equally as impressive on this side. Steve tells me this fish is called George after the pink hippo in the children's TV <laughs> programme, Rainbow, um, apparently. That's right, Steve. That's right. Or it might be because of the the cross in the linear, which makes it look like the, the George cross. I don't know, one of them reasons. <laughs> right, let's put it back. There he goes. Yes, made up with that. The Pink Hippo Linear, it's now called. Yeah, that's not quite what we had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> the geese were being proper annoying when you were having your nap. I don't know how you slept through that. I'm not saying I would have shot them on my leg. Speaking of which, did I ever tell you about the really early days at my lake i had to control the waterfowl population because they're a nightmare yeah. so i was basically controlling all sorts of vermin sort of land-based sky-based and water-based 
Um, and we had some new members on, myself and a couple of the other syndicate lads. Went round to see them on the night, we'd reeled in the rod, so I'd have a chat with them. The rods were in the water and uh, we sort of said hello. Nothing, just weren't there, nothing. Thought it must be the next guy's bivvy. Went to his bivvy, hello, you there? Weren't there. Give their alarms a little pull, see where they come running from, nothing. So we tied a bit of line to their line, like went and hid in the bushes and give it up, pulling at this for ages, we're all excited, waiting for them to come running. Nothing. Three rods in the water each. I'm like, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. I want to reel the rods in. So I reeled in the rods. Afterwards, I thought, actually, I want to go more than that. There was a dead duck that had drifted <laughs> into the edge. So I kind of hooked that through its top lip, <laughs> if you like, <laughs> top beak. And I'm like, trying to cast it like this. <laughs> cast it right into the middle of the... Boom, boosh, splashed away. That was like dead funny to me. I'm like chuckling at myself. I thought, actually, the rabbits had been eating all my plants that I planted. Managed to find one of them that had also, <laughs> also been shot. <laughs> so that got up to its top lip as well. <laughs> I cast that into the middle of the pond. <laughs> there was a rat. A rat. Found a rat that I'd shot. <laughs> well... <laughs> Hooked the rat, <laughs> cast that into the middle of the pond. We all went back to bed. The next morning, one of the syndicate lads comes running run to me, baby, went, He's reeling in his rods! He's reeling in his rods! <laughs> so we all sort of like went round, we're all looking and what have you. Anyhow, the lads, he's reeling in and he shouts to his mate, I've got someone on, I've got someone on! Don't know where they'd been. They'd come back at this stage, obviously. <laughs> I've got someone on! He's like reeling, the lad's down there with the net, he's getting all excited and all that. He's getting all excited, and you can see it bow waving towards him. He's like, reeling, and he's like, oh, it's a rat. <laughs> it's like, a rat? <laughs> I've caught a rat. How have you caught a rat? I don't know, I've caught a rat. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, so he, he looks at the rat. <laughs> Brings it back. And he goes to reel in his other rod. Oh, we're all excited here. He's reeling it in, he's reeling it in. He's like, I've got, I've got some, I've got some. Reel it in. Oh, it's a duck. A duck? <laughs> I've got a duck. You've had a rat on that rod and a duck on No, I've had a rat on that rod and a duck on that rod. How have you done that tunnel? Oh, no. And uh, <laughs> so there he is. Re goes to this third rod. This time it's a massive ball wave coming up. His rod's bent over. He's pulling in. He's like, oh, it's, I've got some, I've got some. And it, and it pops up and he's like, oh, it's a rabbit. He's <laughs> like, like, how the f have you caught a rabbit? I don't know. I, mean, ah, I know what you've done, mate. You, you've cast on the far bank. It hasn't landed in the water. It's cast on the far bank. A rabbit's come along, <laughs> picked up your hook bait, and jumped in the lake and drowned. And, oh, maybe, maybe. That nah, wouldn't have done that. Anyhow, that's it. Week later, the lads come in, the sh in my tackle shop, and they said, oh, I've got a bit of a, a complaint. So, oh, OK. So we think some lads are playing tricks on us down your lake. I said, right, OK. I said, well, why is that? He said, well, reeled in the rods last week. First one I reeled in. <laughs> First one I reeled in, I had a rat on. A rat? <laughs> I said, yeah, I had a rat. I said, oh, well, they do dive down. I said, I've, I've seen them that they pick up swan mussels in the edge. And it's true, they were diving down, picking up swan mussels. So it's dive down, seen your rock bait, picked it up, you caught a rat. And, oh, yeah, all right. The next one, there was a duck. I said, well, you know they're a nightmare. I said, I've, I've been shooting them. I said, they're a bit of a nightmare. It's, it's dived down, it hasn't moved your leg, and it's drowned. And yeah, but I reel in my third rod, and I've got a, I've got a rabbit. I said, oh, I said, mate, you've cast on the far bank. It's come along, seen your rug bait, picked it up, jumped in the lake and drowned. And his mate's gone, see, I told you that's what's happened. I told you. Mental, isn't it? Absolutely mental. If we've learned anything from this story. Don't leave your rods unattended at my lake. That's what they've learned. There's, there's that, and also that if you expect to go to Mark Pitchers' <laughs> lake, exclusive bookings, don't expect to see any wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and don't leave your odds unattended. <laughs> Actually That's a good. true story. A good story.
So you've heard me mention the snags that are present in the lake and the need to use a braided snag leader as well as a lead free leader to reinforce the end setup. Well, this is the reason why you have to do so. You can see the rocks here behind me on the bank side. Well, what you can see here is also replicated out there in the lake. The sides of the rocks are very, very sharp. If you were just to use a main line straight through, then there's a very good chance that the line would brush against it and just cut you off instantly. So in the rules here, you have to use a braided snag leader and a lead-free leader, and it's also a 0 0.40 main line, um, which that's all I use anyway. I use a 23 pound Exocet, which is 0.40. It's a very strong, very tough, very abrasion resistant main line. So that's what I was using regardless. But as for all the other rules, I had no idea I was coming to this venue and I had no idea what the fishing entailed but i was very lucky i had all the necessary uh, snag fishing items in the back of my van that i use for my overseas fishing um, also in the rules you have to use a snag leader well i had the 50 pound armadillo braid and you also have to use a lead free leader behind that well i was using the uh, 50 pound submerged braid again something i always carry with me it's a very, very tough material that sinks really well, keeps those last few yards pinned to the deck, but also reinforces the setup against any, any cutoffs. Lastly, the fishery rules state that the lead must be dropped on the take, and the fishery actually recommends the slick lead clips, which is what I had anyway. And by using them with the tail rubber just lightly pushed on, a heavy lead, a four ounce lead, when you get a pickup, that lead will discharge and quite often the fish rise up in the water clear of any snags that may be on the bottom. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an update on what's happening, what I think's happening and where I think this is going. Right now, there's not a lot happening. <laughs> <laughs> and not a lot has happened and I'm not sure if much more is going to happen but today we, we haven't seen anywhere near as many fish as we did yesterday morning we've seen two fish show but that could be because when it was kind of bite time activity time we were splodging around in the water dealing with that fish so that could have upset them a bit I just hope it hasn't seen them move out the area because the two fish I've seen since then, one has been that side of, well, over that side of halfway. But then I have seen one very close to my left hand rod. But I've had no liners at all. This time yesterday I was getting liners quite regularly. I've had nothing, not, not even a, a beep. So I hope they haven't moved. Um, there's only one night of this challenge remaining. And I think that is going to be my chance of a bite. In, in darkness, I mean, that, that first fish came pretty much bang on dusk really so I think from there up until about around 8 maybe 9 a.m. at a push I think that's that's your window of opportunity I think during the days it's a complete waste of time if zigs were, were permitted maybe you can nick a fish on a zig but they're not so there's nothing we can do about that so yeah over half the stock are 30 pounders so law of averages law of averages says that my next bite surely must be a 30 but obviously it doesn't work that way. It depends on what mood the carp gods are in and it depends on a large slice of luck also. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where we are at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a slice of luck. I can get one more bite that happens to be a 30. And if that does, then it's job done. Well, I was just sat contemplating moving one of the rods towards an island where I'd seen a couple of fish show. And the very rod I was contemplating moving <laughs> has just rattled off. Oh, this is a horrible fight. The fish is fighting really deep. I can feel the line grating and pinging and it keeps getting caught around rocks. All of a sudden it'll ping free and I think it's cut me off, but it hasn't. It's just looped around a rock and then back off. This is so, so nerve-wracking, so tense. 
In the middle of the day, you would never expect a bite with conditions like this. In the middle of the day. The fish isn't doing anything now, it's just under the surface, which is good. It's just gently plodding around. Didn't expect this rod. After I seen them fish by the island, I had to move this. Was this over the spread of boiling? This was oh. over the spread of boiling, yes. Mega. Oh, that's yeah. a lovely scaly fish. That is such a lovely scaly fish. This will be three tactics. And it's not a little fish either, is it? Come on, that is an amazing scaly fish. Please, come on. No, no, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get in. Yes! <laughs> I don't know how big he is. But he is absolutely awesome. Look at that for a carp. Look at that for a carp. <sighs> that is ridiculous. Oh, yes. <sighs> Did not expect a bite at this time of day. After what I said earlier, small windows of opportunity between the hours of darkness and maybe it's an hour into light, two hours into, into the light. Middle of the day, sun blazing down. Hardly any wind on the water. Didn't look good for a bite at all. And then bang, out the blue. Just what I was thinking about moving the rod as well. <sighs> yes. What do you reckon? How big is he? I reckon he's close, but not quite. I think he's close. close. I think it's very, very close. I think it's just under again, but I've had three carp. I think we both think this is going to be close, don't we? It's close. It's close. I can't call this one. You ready? Yeah. Oh! Only got to done it. 31 1. Yes! Oh, I said by law of averages, my next bite must be a 30. Three bites, three tactics. Third fish a 30. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Oh, and look at it as well, what a fish to do it with. I'm just saying this, I don't think you've ever passed a challenge with a fish as good as that. Oh, no way. Never. No way. So <laughs> 30 odd challenges. You can say that, that would be one up to the... We just have. We've had. That's we've literally just, just gone in. It's just gone in. Just it's happened. In. It's in. <laughs> So, I guess this is it then, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> what a fish to pass this challenge with. Three bites and every one of them has been amazing. Each fish has been absolutely stunning. But I think that just caps it off for me. 31 pounds, one ounce. And that is challenge Past. I don't say past, I forgot what I say. It's been that long since I say complete. One last look. Look at that. <laughs> so, off you go. perfect an absolutely perfect end to this challenge and I could go home now a hero but <laughs> I've got one more night here still and with fish like this here there's no way I'm going to go home a night early there's no way so I'm going to stay I can relax now and uh, yeah take it all in celebrate your Welsh cake and a Welsh tea Absolutely. Yeah, the only way. Yes.
Well, the challenge is in the bag now, so I can relax. And I've just put that rod back out. That just caught me that 30 pounder. Um, I've gone with a mesh bag of boilie crumb attached. I'm going to ping just a few 10 mil boilies in the area. And I'm also going to put out a few spots of boily crumb too. And I think I'm going to actually change all rods to the same tactic tonight. Um, just a couple of spots of bait, mesh bags, and I think I think that's the way forward. And if it's not, it doesn't really matter now. It's done three bites now from this location. Are they still going to be here after all that pressure? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I've not seen anything elsewhere to suggest they've moved or to suggest they've stayed. Tonight will be the, uh, the telling factor. Power behind me, I can't get it right. Happy, right. Welsh cake time, boy. Oh. <gasps> I think of the last time we went to Wales, I think someone kicked off, didn't they? Why? Because you were impersonating Welsh people. Oh, they didn't say anything offensive though, no? Probably, well, you obviously offended someone, so obviously you did say something offensive. Was it a bad Welsh impression? Impression. If it's anything like the one you're doing now. Mm. So what, uh, what if I did like a Scouse accent? Is that offensive? Or Geordie, Cockney, Scottish, French, Italian. What if I wasn't impersonating the Welsh accent? I was genuinely trying to blend in. I wasn't trying to be offensive. I was actually being quite the opposite by trying to fit in. Well, that would be fine. So That's what fine. would you say to fit in? Probably Welsh cakes for tea, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else they would say. I don't know. I've, I've, I've literally been to Wales three times in my life. No, no, you're not having, no, you're not having me do a really sh accent. But, you, but I thought you said you were genuinely trying to blend in. So this was. is a good Welsh phrase to say, isn't it? I, I am trying to blend in. Let's sit down with a Welsh cake boy and watch the rugby. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. This <laughs> Even got the rolling of the R, like 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 Tom Jones does. Here we go. Here we go. We're in business. We are in business. Jesus, that light. Bright and unnecessary. Still half daylight. Isn't it weird that that side's English? You go, yeah, Glen Getty. Flip it around to the Welsh side and you're like... <laughs> and it's actually spelled exactly Glen... 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 And it's spelled exactly the same. No, we're going to have a Welsh cake, boy. Oh. Well, you can never slice that in half. No way is that happening. Maybe eaten straight from the packet or reheated. I think we had them straight from the packet. The carpi challenge. And I don't think we're overly impressed, were we? Oh, they smell good. Oh, they smell much better. I'm going to get more butter in. This, this is it. All the Welsh people are going, oh, boy, oh. They're going <laughs> mental at this stage now, seeing everything what I'm doing to their Welsh cakes. <laughs> raspberry, no, no, raspberry. Running. Controversial move there by Charrington and his raspberry jam. I haven't burnt them. Butter and jam I'm going for. Not as good as a scone. If, if there were next to scones in the supermarket, you'd never choose them though, would you? Over scone. If you wanted a scone and scones weren't available, you'd get them and you'd be, you wouldn't be completely disappointed, just a little bit. Is any of that offensive in any way? Well, it's just before first light and I was already awake but dozing in the bag 
because I'd had a, I'd had a liner on the right hand rod, that same rod, just ripped off. Well, as much as it could ripped off when I'm fishing locked up. Well, although this fish doesn't affect the challenge in any way, I still feel really on edge playing this fish. It still feels very nerve wracking just due to the sheer amount of rocks and snags and things like that that are down there. I, can't, I certainly can't relax and enjoy it, but I am enjoying it. <laughs> I do like that spot off to the right. That's done three bites now. Really going. Right, come on, stop going now and go in the net. I can't really tell, it's very orangey. It's a fully scale thing. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! That looks a really nice fish as it went in. I haven't had a, it's a little bit dark for me to see properly. Is it a common or a fully? I can't tell. That's like a glass common thing. Or fully, so I'm still not sure. Yeah, one of those um, glass commons. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? With your fish. Never caught anything like that before. No. Well, it's such a cold morning. There's a really heavy frost on the ground. There was ice in the unhooking mat. But it hasn't made that much of a difference to the fish because we've got a really, really Amazing looking common here. I reckon about 28, 14. 30 pound, 30. <sighs> That'll do. <laughs> Brace of 30s. Brace of, 30s. Brace of Welsh 30s. I passed the challenge twice, almost. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now though, I'm gonna put him in the retainer, in the margins, because I know Steve would love to have a look at this fish. He was talking about um, this particular fish last night. It's the only glass carp in the lake. I know, I know he'll want to have a look at that. So we're gonna put him in the margins, give Steve a call and take a look at him in a short while. So yeah, I'm just moving my sticks over to the right. I was really confident in this left hand rod. That's where we're seeing fish kind of consistently while we've been here but it hasn't produced anything but i have been seeing fish over by the island and i didn't really want to go over there because it means putting line right through the swim and i was worried that would put too much pressure on this area and see the fish move out um, but now the challenge is in the bag and i've had four nice fish i feel now i can maybe not be as cautious. I'm gonna put a, uh, just a, a little mesh bag mm -hmm. over by the island where I have seen quite a few fish recently and it'll either pay off or it won't, um, but it's certainly worth the gamble at this stage now. That's what I'm gonna do. Get this bank stick in. I've got the rod, the mesh bag already attached, ready to go out. Let's see if we can have just one more. Well, that rechuck has paid off. That rod's only been in half an hour. Get away from that island. Around that island, there's lots of really sharp rocks. Really sharp rocks. I cannot let it go near there. Nice to turn in. This is a powerful fish. Really powerful fish. 
uh, rod's hooped over from the butt and that clutch is so tight it's still taking a bit I can afford to play him a little bit where he is oh, powerful powerful fish this one doing it like she's pulling and pulling and pulling. Let's get in there, yes we go, yes! It's another absolutely amazing looking fish and another chunk. Have a look at that for a common i think that might be the best looking common i think i've ever caught this is what's called a a glass carp they have a a pigment defect which gives them this kind of unusual shine to them and yeah it, it's the first one i've ever caught and it, it's, it's probably the best common i've ever caught it's just absolutely perfection colours on it really are something else. <laughs> I'm blown away, really am. 30 pound 13 ounces, second 30 of the session. Doesn't get much better than that does it? Well it's time to say goodbye to Bungle. I have been allowed to name this fish and seeing as I've already caught a George, I think Bungle is only fitting. <laughs> bye bye Bungle. One. Next one. That's another. <laughs> another, yeah. Keep coming. <laughs>